Good evening and praise the Lord to everyone. I'm Minister West, your host of One Crying Out in the Wilderness Gospel News Station. I come to you live this evening at 7.10 p.m. right here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Listen, tonight, normally I will be with the Apostle Tamar McIver. Unfortunately, I did not, we did not connect tonight. There was a message that we were to speak concerning forgiveness part two. However, I will spend a few minutes here online to speak to you concerning a few things tonight since we were not able to connect. Listen, there is a word that I must give to you that you need to hear. I didn't prepare for this. I didn't didn't write a lot of things down though. But I want you to see what God needs you to hear. Because somebody has become pretty much weary of well doing. Some of us have picked up a mindset, a beatitude. We have placed a wall in our spiritual life concerning the things of God. What do you mean? Some of us who said we believe God, who started out believing God, Proclaim his name anywhere we go before family. But because of trouble and issues and church hurt, because of uh, unanswered prayers and issues of life, downfall spiritually, weaknesses, we have become weary. We we talk about God when everything is smooth. We talk about God when everything is nice, it's peaches and cream. When we find ourselves in a fiery furnace, in the heat of the moment, we don't believe the same God that we talked about when things were smooth. Yes, we're human. We go through stuff. We're supposed to feel things. We're supposed to feel like Job did when he began to complain about what God did, what God didn't do, how he was in the predicament and God told Job, hush your mouth. Look at the stars. Look at the sky. Look at the hair on your head. Can you name them? Can you number them? If not, shut your mouth. Where were you when I put the stars in the sky? Listen, see, God always prepare his servants for a message. The message I will speak to you tonight, if I was to draw a subject, what kind of God am I serving? What kind of God am I serving? Let, listen, get your Bible. I didn't get a chance to put the scripture on, on the screen I didn't get a chance to put it up there. I need you to get your Bible on this one. Matthew's 14th chapter. Matthew's 14th chapter. I need you to get your Bible on this one. I need you to get your word on this one. Watch. I didn't pull it up here. I can easily go to Matthew's 14th chapter. I already had it keyed in. It was already here. I'm already in Matthews. I can go right here to 14th chapter real easy. But I want you to see something. Matthews, the 14th chapter. I want you to hear what happened with the damsel who danced before King, the King Herod, Herodias' husband. And I'm going to show you something 
in the scripture. And I will tell you what kind of God is this? What kind of God do we serve? Go to the sixth chapter. 14 and or the sixth verse, the 14th chapter in the sixth verse of Matthew. I'm going to read this. I need you to see this. I need you to stay with me because this is a word that you must hear. Listen, the word of God says this. I don't have time to read it from the first verse. When you get time, read it on the first verse. Sixth verse says, but when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Watch. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. I'm reading. And she being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. This woman, this daughter, was always coerced by her mother. She was always, as the Bible said, instructed of her mother. Her mother uh, was married to King Herod's uh, uh, a brother, but here he, he, King Herod's brother died, and then she married her brother's uh, 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 her brother's or husband's brother Herod. When John the Baptist spoke about it, John the Baptist was put in prison. The same John the Baptist that said, prepare the way. I'm a messenger of the Messiah. I'm the messenger of Jesus Christ. I'm the messenger. There's one that cometh after me who's preferred before me, whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to unlatch. He is that light. He's coming after me. What he's going to do for you is not what I can do. I baptize you in water, but he's going to baptize you in spirit. Same John the Baptist who Jesus said, that there's none like him, none like John the Baptist, none like him. Watch this. This same John the Baptist was in prison, and King Herodias, or King Herod's wife, Herodias' daughter, which was the young damsel, danced in the face of Herod, the king, pleased him greatly by her dancing. And told her, I will give you anything you ask, even half of the kingdom, just ask me. Because the daughter was always instructed of her mother, the mother was bitter against John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist spoke against that marriage that they had that wasn't right. Mother said, daughter, of all the things the daughter can ask as a young lady, and, and with, a, with a gift from the king to give her anything she asked, she could have asked for chariots and horses and mansions and all the things that young people ask for, but yet she only was instructed of her mother, and the mother used this opportunity to get even with John the Baptist. Listen. So the mother said, daughter, tell him when he asks you that, come here. She, the daughter came on and said, mom, what do you think? The mother said, tell uh, uh, my husband, uh, Herod, that you want John the Baptist's head on the platter right now. Right now. Don't let him live no more. Watch what the Bible says. The Bible says in the eighth verse, and she being before instructed of her mother, said, give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. Listen to that. The king made an oath in front of his men. There was all the uh, invites that came to the kingdom. As, as a king, if I say a thing and I oath a word, if I give a word of oath, I must go on with that oath. I can't take it back. I didn't know that she was going to ask for John the Baptist's head. I was punishing him for a little while, but John the Baptist was a man of God who I always would go to to consult with when I had some issues. 
I didn't know that the wish or the, 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 the thing that the young lady would want or the desire that she would want that I promised with an oath to give her that she was going to ask me to kill a man that I always consulted in. Listen, he has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. We will, we will talk about forgiveness at a latter time which was supposed to be talked about tonight. But God, now that uh, apostle wasn't able to be reached, there is a message tonight. What kind of God do you serve? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in the scripture tonight here. Listen. Now the scripture says here in the 10th verse, and he sent, this is the king Herod sent his men, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. John was beheaded on the spot right that moment, right in the prison. And watch what the 11 verse says. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel. And she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came. John's disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Now, watch this. Jesus, the Messiah, the Holy One, the Chosen One, the name above all names. Every knee must bow of the things in heaven, the things in the earth, the things beneath the earth. And every tongue must confess that he is Lord. There's no name better than Jesus' name or greater. For God hath named him a name above all names. Not that knee, you know what it says. Now, this is the same Jesus that so loved the world, that God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. Who loved us. Who, who died for us. Lamb slain. An atonement for us. Listen. The same Jesus. Here's what the scripture says here. Let's go back to the scripture. In the 13th verse, you got to hear this because the disciples of John, when they saw that John was beheaded, they came to get the body. They retrieved the body from Herod the king, buried John's body by giving him a, a, a reasonable burial and ran to Jesus in the 13th verse. Watch this. The Bible says when Jesus heard of it, he departed. What? He departed thence by the ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. Close the book. Close the book. The scripture tells us here that when Jesus heard that the man that was a forerunner who was doing his just service unto God, like we are, most of us who are ministers and people of God and women of God and men of God who are following Christ, who is following God, who is doing the things that we were called to do, doing the things and sacrificing, being a living sacrifice and trying to please God and trying to do the things we're supposed to do. We believe like what happened to John, that Jesus was supposed to drop everything he did, go back and put John's head back on and get even with Herod and Herodias. The Bible says that Jesus got on the ship, went to the other side, and began to continue his mission that he was supposed to, to do here in the earth. And that is to die for all mankind. And on the way, I'm going to heal and deliver sick people. Freely give to them what I'm going to teach you to do the same in your time. What kind of God that we serve that will let John the Baptist, a prominent a prophet, prophet of God, to, a forerunner of Jesus Christ to die and nothing, no, Jesus didn't go to no funeral. Jesus didn't worry about having no funeral. Jesus didn't go to the grave site, but went on with a mission to keep on ministering the gospel. 
And so it is with us. We must understand that the, what kind of God we serve, a God that so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. The same God told us not to set our affections on things here, but set them in things above. Listen, he said, if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. That's the God that we serve, a God that knows that you're going to be stoned, the God that knows that you're going to be hurt and that you're going to be killed. He said it to his disciples that you're going to be killed for my sake. Some of us are going to be killed for the sake of Christ and that is that we don't need nobody to have no pity party for the thing that we're going through for the losses in our life for the sickness that's attacking us for the problems and the issues that your job and for the problems and the issues in your family but yet yet like Job said though he slay me yet will I trust him God. what kind of God we serve the one that love us one that knows that this feeble, fickle body is going to return back to the dust. So if men kill you, he said, fear not those which can kill the body, but fear the one that can kill the body and the soul. And that is only God Almighty. So if I die in this body, if I die, if I die, let me die. I will be raised up like Jesus was and shall meet him in the air. <laughs> crying. We find ourselves crying. We, 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 we go through things and we, 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 we find ourselves we find ourselves in a, in a bad predicament. We find ourselves we find ourselves so low. We find ourselves so alone. Things don't happen to you. You say, man, how can God how can God allow that to happen? One, one, one young lady and a couple of people I know who had family members to pass away. And they said, how can God care for me? He let my grandmother die. He let my father die. Let my wife or my husband die or my child. And some of us have gotten in our feelings. See, the just shall live by faith. Listen, many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to lose some stuff, man. You're going to go through some stuff, man, and it might be your death. But the greatest thing is to do what Jesus told us all to do, and that is prepare the way. Prepare the way. Put all in your vessel. Make sure that that heaven is your goal. Make sure that heaven will be your home. Get your house in order because the God that we serve knows that this body is going to go through stuff. He said it for us. He already told us. So the, why are you worried about what happens here? What you should worry about more is am I prepared for there? supposed to preach I only have I'm supposed to be, go to work tonight I'm supposed to be asleep I have to go to work at 11 I'm supposed to be asleep somewhere what kind of God do we serve a God that love you that so loved you that he gave his only begotten son he told us from the dust we came and from the dust we shall return he told us the word ain't, ain't, ain't jump around your ear. He that has an ear, let him hear. The word told us these things. The world, the word told us that, 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 that a man that's born of a woman has but a few days and they are full of trouble. You can run to a mountain. You can take a million dollars with you and, and get yourself a pantry bigger than a mountain and full of food and get all the health stuff you need. Take a doctor with you. Take an amusement park with you. Take an exercise place with you and do all the exercise all the breathing aspirators, all the stuff you want to do, trouble shall find you no matter where you go. The problem with us now is that we need to stop cursing God out. Somebody say, I don't curse. Yes, when you, when you don't believe him, you have done worse than cursing him out. Because if you don't believe him, it's an evil spirit. Anybody that don't believe a supreme God who is just and mighty is an evil spirit. But it is a faith and a good thing when a man believes God. It is a righteousness. A 
kind of God do we serve? With the God we serve, he fight for us. But then somebody said, well, wow, he fight for us. Then the Bible said that Jesus told us to pray out, Abba, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. All these things he asked us to pray. And then he said, and then the, then the Lord shepherd said, Lady, yea, do I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, and, and thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And, and, and see, all these things we done said, and we know this stuff is true. God's word is true. What God said is true. But now, just in case, God's word does not be for you that day, meaning that God don't show up when you want him to show up and somebody happens to die or if your situation happens to get worse, listen, listen, you might be a, you might have a Lazarus experience in your life and you might not never be raised up again, but you have to have the Job mentality and that is though God slay me yet when I trust him the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away still blessed be the name of the Lord that's the God I serve he won't never leave me if I die here, I'm going to reign with him. If I die in the name of the Lord, if I die being just, being righteous in God, being a faithful servant, I shall but reign with him. That's the promise of the God we serve. He said there's a place there that I go away to prepare for you. If it's not so, I would not tell thee. You're going to reign there where it will be no more pain, no more sickness, no more crying, no more dying, no more this misery, no more nobody talking about you, scandalizing your name, pulling up your stuff, no more unforgiveness. You shall be like him. Good God Almighty, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, 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 Lord have mercy, I can run. I can run in here. What kind of God do we serve? The God we serve, he allows you to go through the fire. He allows you, he allows enemy. To, to, to form a weapon against you. He allow you to feel the enemy's attack. God allows you to feel weak and alone. God allow you to be thirsty and hungry. He allows you to go into a desert place. He, he, he allow people to scandalize your name. He allow people to lie on you and it looked like it worked because you done got fired from your job or you done got, you done been, been, been stepped on and stepped over and lost and left and forgotten. You've been, you've been criticizing. Oh my God, ostracized. You've been, everything that you can think about evil have happened unto you, but that's the God we serve. He, 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 he wants to make sure that you come out as pure gold he wants to reprove you make you make you strong make you oh give you feet like hind feet oh he wants to make you something that you have never been in your life so therefore you have to go through some extenuous situations and uh, some fiery furnaces and some lion's dens and some waves and waves and waters dashing against your ship you have to go through some stuff in order to be built up on your most holy faith you must be built up until you get the mindset no matter what they do to me I shall believe the report of the Lord that's the God we serve Lord have mercy Jesus I can run in here <laughs> Whoa, Lord have mercy good God I'm done I'm done. I can't talk no more. I can't preach no more here. The God we serve. The God we serve. Said I will never leave you. And some of us have gotten to a point where we think that what he said of never leaving us is only attached here in the world. 
as if though if I if I'm on the doctor's bed and my, and, and my mother died, I thought God, you told me you you told my mom and you would never leave me. That don't mean that God left her because she died. That the death the death that she had has no sting. Grave, where is your victory? There is none to a child of the king. No victory from the grave over for a child of the king. The victory is God's. God allowed you to go there until he, until he get to you to raise you up like he have raised up Jesus. Lord have mercy. I'm done. I'm not going to do an hour tonight. I got to go to bed, get some sleep. I have to go to work tonight at 11 o'clock. Don't worry, we'll be back here. I will try to reach the apostle. See if we can convene our Monday nights. I, I didn't get a chance, I don't think I got a chance to give enough information before I left Facebook. I'm no longer uh, on Facebook. This message is no longer on Facebook unless you all want to share it. You believe that God is blessing you. Why not push the share button? Push the share button, share it to Facebook, let someone else hear the gospel. If you believe that God has touched you in this message, do the same. I'm done. I have to go to work. He that has an ear, let him hear. What kind of God do we serve? The one that loves you so much, way before we loved him. He loved us before the world was framed. In fact, the Bible said that what is man that thou art mindful of him, for he hath made us a little lower than the angels. And he also said in the end time that we're going to be like him. That's how much God loves you. God has promised you so much. God has promised you greatness. God has made you an heir and joined heir with him. Made you a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a chosen generation. That's the God we serve. God allowed the devil to think that he got the victory. When Jesus was crucified, the devil rejoiced. See, I got one. I got the one that looked like God's working in his life a lot. He rebuked many of my imps, many of the devils. We got them now thinking that it was over. And that's the way it is with us. The same way our high priest went, we go. He was done in some bad ways, and so shall we. He died, but he rose again. We will die in the many ways here even in the earth and finances and things like that, but yet you will rise again. Believe God. That's the God that we serve. I'm Minister West, evangelist and host of One Crying Out in the Wilderness Gospel News Station. I thank you for being here with me on this live. Be with me again uh, every Wednesday night, 6 o'clock p.m. right here on One Crying Out in the Wilderness right here on YouTube. YouTube Live. I shall be here. Let everyone know that I'm here. Some people don't know. Let them know that I'm no longer on Facebook. I'm actually now on YouTube. I will be broadcasting from here uh, for the duration indefinitely. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Until next time, God be with you. Thank you for joining One Crown Out of the Wilderness Gospel News Station. It is our call to preach sound doctrine. The truth that make a man free. God bless you and elevate you in Jesus' name. See you in the next prepared spiritual meal. Good night all. God bless you. God bless you.